I mean, if 2023 has proven anything, there's still a lot of excitement about golf. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, the negativity is driving that excitement right now. We're going to start this again. Bearded Bros Golf Show, back for another week. I'm Rod. And I'm Marcus. Um, one more birthday shout out here from Crystal Cochran. Happy birthday, Marcus. So shout out. Um, so let's let's talk about the the thing that has the thumbnail here, and that's the John Rom situation. Um, a lot of news catching fire this week in terms of John Rom uh, possibly going over to live. So again, just pull this comment back up. Um, you know, you have comments from uh, Alan Shipnuck who you know wrote a book prior to the, you know going in and around the live stuff with direct quotes from from Phil when they were still on speaking terms, which their relationship has turned really. Um, you know, there's a lot of animosity there with, you know, yeah. Phil calling him a liar and Alan Shipnuck, you know, I, I don't know. I'm on this. I'm typically on the side of journalism. I know how hard that job is and to just make up sources. I don't think he's just making stuff up. Um, you know, I think people are talking, um, Phil is just, I guess, too dense to realize that you talk out loud, you know, I don't, I don't know. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of loyalty or Phil thinks there's more loyalty in his circle than there is that people are going back and, and attributing quotes yeah. to him. It, you, it's it's tough for me to reconcile in my brain that Phil says he knows nothing about the John Rong conversations. We know about their Arizona State connection. We know about right. their Callaway connection. They share a same agent. And you're telling me you know nothing and you've said nothing about John Rom over to live. You can't also you can't be the smartest man in the room and the dumbest man in the room at the same time. So what do you think about just the feel aspect of this crap? I think it's very goofy. I mean, it, just in so many different aspects, you're in the know. I mean, again, you're one of the what you would call a spokesman or ambassador, one of the lead guys for live and you don't know anything you don't uh-uh. you're not recruiting you're not speaking out in pos- positivity for the league or anything like what's happening here like you're purposefully you know and willfully um obtuse to this or what like that's what i'm trying to figure out because again in typical phil fashion like you say these things where we're like you know, like we can see you, right? Like we can, like, that's the whole thing with Phil to me. It's like, there's no way you're serious right now, bro. Like there's no way. I don't get the, there's no benefit to not, to saying, I don't know anything. Right. Um, right. And I, I know Rom has a disservice to be honest. I agree. I agree. And I mean, I, I want to just come out and say, do I fully believe that John Rom is in talks with um live yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> absolutely there, you know part of the rumors were that are that he is pushing for change in the structure of the league right so the biggest hang up has been them not be receiving world ranking points and it seems like he's trying to get the league on board with playing four rounds having cuts and changing the general structure that is keeping them from having world ranking points. Like it's cool to have like for him. And there's quite a few other guys that have, um, you know, recent major wins that they have exemptions into majors, you know, some for life, some for the next five years or so until that expires, you know, outside of the one that they won directly. Cool. But what about the rest of your folks that want to, that haven't been to a major or still trying to compete on that level in their careers as they're still young, you still need to be able to have a pathway, right? To, to do that outside of them playing in these national opens where they have weird exemptions or sponsors exemptions into them. And so if that's the argument and what he's pushing for, again, it's going to take unanimous, um, you know, votes from all the captains within live. And I think there's some other people that need to sign off and approve on that for the structure to change. Um, There's some selfish guys in that group that probably aren't going to be on board and went over there 
for the fact that they are not going to have to play a lot of golf and they got their money and that's what they want to roll with. So it yeah. seems like that's an uphill part of the, the argument or the battle. Um, but I totally understand, you know, you're hearing numbers like 475 million, 600 million that are on the table for ROM. And, you know, I can, the, the sad part is, you know, for me, you know, I want to see just golf thriving, healthy and, you know, just kind of looking at all the crap that happened this week, I was like, this is a lot of drama and bull crap going on around golf. It feels right. like some tabloid caddy, you know, I'm just sitting here thinking like, you know, back in the day, uh, just I used to have this phrase, I said, golf. say that again. This is new for golf. It like, is. There's not really a lot of drama like this and, you know, the he say, she say stuff. Like it's pretty much, yeah. I'm not saying it's all out in the open, but like more times than not, the person in question is going to come to the mic or drop a statement immediately. Not immediately, but like, you know, very, very expeditiously and clear the air as soon as possible. And don't let it just linger around in the air like what's happening here, what's happening there. So this is this is very new. This is very like, I, honestly, this is very generational. Because John Rahm is just, you know, he's one of the young guys where he thinks he can just, you know, kind of have it his way the whole way around. And that's not how the world works. But, you know, mm -hmm. they're they're trying to move mountains to get him here. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, it's not like they're lacking for cash. But uh, um, to see it going forward, the way it currently is constituted, we neither one of us can see the business model moving forward or the Saudis right. retaining interest in this setup when they're not even close to bringing in any money. However, you change the format, you start, you know, collecting world rock ranking points and more players start coming over as a result of that. It, it changes the equation completely. Right. And it puts the PGA back in flux where they were, on their heels earlier in 2023, really scrambling, you know, throwing a lot of stuff in the mix to try to retain players. Well, you know, we think about exactly. things that they've done, like the player impact, um, you know, about the popularity, which Rory won this year um, over Tiger, um, who took it last year. You know, the elevated events and additional money attached to those. You know, we're hearing about equity possibilities for the players going forward all these things that the pga has tried to do to counter live um it's gonna it's gonna double down if rom moves it's gonna be tragic for the pga tour because there are going to be other players that move over there if the reasons that and things that he's pushing for actually happen it's gonna give other guys the incentive to do the same unfortunately so um, I hate it because I'm just tired of the the back and forth. Um, you know, X, formerly known as Twitter, it has become on the golf side of it. It's become super toxic. It's yeah. um, you know, it's just almost unbearable. You know, a lot of the pages that you follow, it's just infighting, people picking a side. And I wouldn't even say that honestly. We we don't. Yeah, it's clear. I, I don't think we're PGA Tour shields like hey oh they do do everything right that's not the point it's just that live doesn't have a great product at the end of the day if right. live was bringing something great to the table um you know then we'd be like okay cool this is good this is different i think you mentioned it the other day um i think you attributed it to to rom about something about the game has been played this way for so long remind me what you were saying yeah there. i mean yeah john rom quoted quoted it himself he's like I would just like to remain playing the game how it's been played for hundreds of years before we even got here. So why would we change the format and then expect something different to happen? That's the thing that, and again, like that's just what we said. How can you possibly go against what the formula has always been and expect it to automatically just go over and change when this is not a formulable uh compound this isn't what's gonna happen in a major it's gonna be four rounds it's gonna be championship level golf three level three rounds uncut i mean what what are we talking about that's, that's never changing golf. right imagine yeah. playing the a three round masters that's 
like that makes no sense to you at all, right? They'll go to Monday or Tuesday real quick for the Masters. I don't, I don't even understand what's happening. What, what are we even talking about here? Yeah, like, they're not shut, they're they're not finishing a major in three fifty four holes because of weather. Um, right. I think we'd probably have to go deep into the history books to go find the last time that that occurred. It's just not something that happened. So, you know, you you play regular season golf to get ready for majors. We still know that to be true. So mm-hmm. the format should still match up, and you should be training for that. You don't you don't go three all year, three rounds, and then you know. That doesn't prep you for a four round event. So I don't know, man, that part of it. And that argument from us is that the business model currently is not stable for live. Um, it doesn't provide long term stability for its players. And that's the argument. That's it. It's not that we hate people having fun or I mean, we do hate. Right. <laughs> there are yeah. some aspects that Bad are looks. gimmicky. It's like they've they've traded in the golf being serious about golf for the gimmicky side of it. That's the part that we have a problem with. Um, But otherwise, I mean, it is what it is. So, um, you know, we'll see how things shake out. I mean, we're kind of, again, running up against the deadline for the Saudi PIF and PGA framework, um, you know, deal to be finished by December 31st. Said a few weeks ago that they would gladly extend that deadline out. That's kind of an artificial deadline, Um, There's no drop dead date on that. They could easily scramble, extend it out another month or two, um, you know, have some room to play with during the regular season. I mean, this is all really financial on the back end of things. Again, there's some private equity guys just kind of snooping and waiting in the wings for that deal to follow through, fall through um, or be added to it. um, Because I don't think there's any, I mean, if 2023 has proven anything, there's still, a lot of excitement about golf. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, the negativity is driving that excitement right now. But, you know, we saw the game during the pandemic become popular again on the amateur level. Um, and really, people have reinvigorated interest. You'd be in, you'd be it's it, even in my little weekend group. There's a couple of guys that said they had put down golf and have come back to it in recent years that had played pretty much their entire lives and come back to it. And that's really a story that you see playing out throughout the country. You see more women playing the golf on the amateur level. I see more couples on the golf course than I ever have um, in the last, you know, whatever, 12 years playing the game. And so you just see the popularity soaring and you see the money kind of saying, okay, you know, we're, we're ready to throw some cash in the, in the ring and you know get something out of this so uh, right. again i just i just wanted to get back to you know some co- cohesive level of you know enjoyment and then there not be all this animosity and drama you know and just you know seeing dudes be bitches is real sad to me uh, i right. hate to be crass like that but that's just kind of what it is just the sniping back and forth and the drama that surrounded the game has been unfortunate to me in the last 2 years you, you get a lot of stuff out of this channel, y'all. A little business knowledge, you know, a little technical golf knowledge, a little BS in here and there. You're you're in a well-rounded environment. <laughs> so uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that membership button. Um, we got you covered on all things golf.